Hey there, my name is Austin and I'm the head of content and community at Fritz AI. In this tutorial, I'm going to walk you through the steps of training a custom machine learning model using Fritz AI and then implementing that trained model inside Lens Studio. Uh, using custom ML inside Lens Studio with the help of SnapML uh, allows lens creators to actually extend the capabilities of Lens Studio. Uh, things like applying unique artistic effects, recognizing and tracking custom objects like brand logos or product packaging or really anything you can think of, and then creating unique computer vision triggers for AR effects. Now, an essential step of any ML project uh, before you start building is defining what you want your model and thus your lens to do in the real world. So before we jump into the tools and model building and all that good stuff, I want to take a second to cover that. So for this tutorial, we want to create a lens that allows us to change the color of a face mask or covering, but leave the rest of the scene unchanged, kind of like this. Additionally, we want our ML model to perform this segmentation when masks are being worn by users, not when the masks are sitting on a table, hanging from, a, from an ear, etc. Uh, this context is going to help uh, when we create our data set, but more on that in a moment. So first, uh, first things first, we need to create a project inside of Fritz AI. I'm going to show you how to do that right now. We can create a new project using the left drop down menu on the Fritz AI web app homepage. I'll enter a simple name for our project and for our project type, I'll choose custom trained. Fritz AI currently supports three types of custom models for SnapML and Lens Studio, image labeling, object detection, and image segmentation. Uh, for this tutorial, we're going to build an image segmentation model. When you create a project, you can also choose to upload some dataset images to get started quickly. But for this tutorial, I'm going to skip this option so I can show you the full process of creating a dataset. Okay, so before we jump in, I wanted to give you a really quick and short overview of Fritz AI Studio. So this is the studio. It's our no-code machine learning platform that uh, empowers you and your team to build completely custom ML models that are ready to use inside Lens Studio. Uh, almost everything you need to build these models is available inside Fritz AI Studio. Uh, specifically, with the platform you can generate and collect labeled datasets, uh, train models that are optimized for Lens Studio uh, without code, and then deploy those models directly to Lens Studio, uh, either as model files or Lens Studio template projects. Um, so what we're going to do today is we're going to work through that entire process end to end. All right, here we go. When starting a project from scratch, building an initial dataset can be one of the most daunting, difficult, and costly tasks. But fear not. Rather than collecting and labeling thousands of images of face masks by hand, we'll use our dataset generator to programmatically do some of this work for us. All we'll need to do is create and manually label a handful of what we call seed images. We'll learn more about these in a moment. Creating a new project automatically creates what's called a new seed image collection for us. Image collections contain both images and their corresponding annotations. These will eventually be used to train our machine learning model. So now it's time to upload some seed images. Uh, but first, a bit of important info and context about seed images. Uh, seed images are actually transparent PNGs. And they'll be used like stickers that will be programmatically pasted onto random backgrounds. This will allow us to generate a large, diverse uh, set of images that will be used for model training. Um, and though uh, project requirements can vary, uh, we recommend you start with somewhere between 20 and 50 seed images for each type and class of object you want to predict. Um, so for this face mask segmentation example, that would mean uploading 20 to 50 images of face masks, all with their backgrounds removed. As another example, if you wanted to train, say, an image labeling or classification model that distinguishes between three different types of food items, you'd want to upload and label 60 to 150 seed images. That'd be 20 to 50 for each different food item or each class. So we have a couple decisions to make here. Um, for our model, we could make seed images of just the face mask itself, uh, but including the subject's head and shoulders in some of the seed images might result in better model performance. And this is especially true since our intention is to segment masks while people are wearing them. As a consequence, uh, the model will learn what a face mask looks like in the context of a human face or head. So a mask sitting on a table, for example, would be less likely to be detected. Additionally, the greater variety in your seed images in terms of their angle, rotation, uh, images that do and do not have facial hair, races, genders, etc., the more accurate your model will end up being in the real world. Um, there are quite a few free and easy to use tools out there for creating these transparent PNGs. 
uh, tools like remove bg photo remove dot bg pardon photoshop and even preview on mac os can do this um, i personally prefer remove dot bg but feel free to use uh, the software that feels most natural to you um, and additionally image databases like google images unsplash pixabay etc uh, others like that are good places to start when looking for seed images, um, but just be sure that any photos you use have appropriate uh, licensing. For demonstration purposes, I'm only going to upload and label three right now, but the full data set for this project would need to include quite a few more seed images. We can easily bulk upload these. I prefer to keep all my seed images in a separate folder just so they're easier to find. Now that we've uploaded our seed images, we need to label them. We can also do this right inside Fritz AI, so there's no need to use an external labeling tool or anything like that. Inside the image collection, we can click the annotate images button to open the annotation tool. The first step is to create an object or set of objects that can be annotated in each image. When we start annotating images in a new collection, you can see here that we're asked to define these objects upon launching the annotation tool. This set of objects defines what your model will be able to predict. And here we only have one object, a face mask, which I'll type in here. But you can easily create more objects to be annotated if needed. Once this object is defined and confirmed, we can start annotating these seed images. Remember, I'm only going to work through three of these just as an example, but you'll want your data sets to include quite a few more seed images. If you're new to the labeler, it takes a little getting used to. I'd personally recommend familiarizing yourself with and ultimately using the hotkeys or keyboard shortcuts. So to label our first image then, we select the face mask object and then use the drawing tool to draw a segmentation mask around the, uh, well, the, the face mask. We'll do this with each image, being sure to save each annotation once we're happy with it before moving on to the next. You can always delete annotations you're unhappy with and start over. I'm going to speed up the process here, but take care to ensure your seed image labels are as accurate as possible. After all these seed images have been annotated, you can use the image collection that we just created and annotated to generate what's called a dataset snapshot. Now, snapshots are sets of images and their annotations frozen in time, and these are the things we actually use to train models. Provide a name, ensure you have the correct seed image collection selected, and choose the number of images you want to generate. We recommend somewhere between 50 and 100 snapshot images per seed images. So for instance, for 50 seed images, a snapshot of somewhere between 2,500 and 5,000 images. As a general rule, more good data is going to be better. But again, for demonstration purposes, I'm just going to generate a smaller snapshot of 150 images from those three seed images I uploaded and labeled earlier. You can also use a couple advanced configuration options, one of which is adjusting the foreground scale range, which will control the relative size of the seed image stickers on each snapshot image. The goal is to generate images that contain objects that most closely approximate what the model might see in real world use. Generating your dataset should only take a few minutes, but while you wait, you can check out this dataset preview to get a better sense of how the dataset generator actually works and to see if you've picked an appropriate foreground scale range. So now we've successfully generated a snapshot and we're ready to train a first version of our model. Model training is actually really simple in Fritz AI. There's no ML code or Python notebooks or any other model building overhead. To start a training job, click on the training tab on the left hand menu and then the train a model button over on the right. All we need to do is provide a name, choose the snapshot to train the model on, and then set a training compute budget. We recommend five training hours for custom models, but do note that if your model stops improving during training, Fritz AI will automatically stop the training process and you won't be charged for hours that are left over. So here I'll keep the suggested number of hours, make sure that I've chosen the correct snapshot, and then hit train. That's it. Our model is now training. Similar to the dataset snapshot we generated, we'll get an email confirming when our model is done training. So I'm going to grab a bit of food while we wait and I'll see you in just a bit. Hey again, so I just got that email letting me know my first model has finished training successfully. Now to show you how this works in Lens Studio, I actually ended up training a slightly different version of the same model, just with more seed images and a bigger dataset snapshot, just like we talked about but it'll still do the same intended task, just hopefully with a bit higher accuracy. 
If we jump back into our Fritz AI account, we can find the train model under the Models tab in the left-hand menu. If you want to see more details about your model training job, such as how long it took when it finished, visit the Training tab. Fritz AI gives us two options for accessing our train model. We can download the model file directly and add it to Lens Studio manually, or we can download a zip file that includes a ready-made Lens Studio project file and a couple other resources. For creators just getting started with ML, we recommend the project template, which is what we'll work with here. All right, so I've downloaded and unzipped the file. A couple of things to pay attention to. First is the lsproj file right here. This will launch Lens Studio and initialize a template project. Second, this readme file inside the public folder. We're gonna work through these steps in a moment, but this readme also provides these step-by-step -step instructions. Also in this public folder, we have some test assets that you'll be able to use inside Lens Studio. Keep in mind that the following steps we're gonna go through uh, to put our model inside Lens Studio are for image segmentation models only. Other model types require slightly different wiring inside Lens Studio, so be sure to reference the README in your specific project file. Uh, and additionally, Fritz AI segmentation project templates come preloaded with a color changing UI, and this is just a way to show you how models actually function inside Lens Studio. Upon opening the Lens Studio project file, you'll be shown a model import dialog box. You don't need to change any of these settings, just click import. We take care of all of that under the hood at Fritz when you're training your model. You might also see a dialog box pop up asking if you want to compress any of your assets. Click yes. Fritz AI projects come with an ML component or ML controller in some cases where more scripting is needed already set up for you. We just need to add our model to that component and then do a bit of input and output wiring. If we click on the ML component in the Objects panel, its configuration will open up in the Inspector. In the Components Model field, we first add our model, which should be in that Resources panel in the bottom left. Next, we need to set the model's input texture to Device Camera Texture. This will basically feed what the camera sees to the segmentation model. Then, we need to create an output texture, which will allow us to use the predictions that the model outputs i.e. predicting the pixels that belong to face masks. To do this, all we need to do is click Create Output Texture in the Model Output Options. This texture will then be used by other Lens Studio elements to access the output of your model or what it predicts. We're getting really close now. Now the last step to connect everything is to connect the predictions that the model is outputting to a segmentation material. Again, we've pre-configured this in the project template, but it should work with other materials as well. From the resources list in the bottom left corner of Lens Studio, select the Fritz Segmentation Texture material. And then in the inspector on the right, click the Model Output option under Graph Parameters and set the value to the output texture you just created. And that's it. Uh, with that, we've successfully trained and implemented a face mask segmentation model in Lens Studio, resulting in this uh, face mask color changer. So now we have this preview uh, image here, this little preview GIF and we can test out our model with the color slider. Um, and there's also a few other ways to test. You can push this to Snapchat and test. You can use your webcam, any of number of ways, or upload uh, your own images, things like that, images and videos. So there's a number of ways to test this and see how it performs. We're really excited about ML inside Lens Studio for a wide variety of reasons, but I wanna remind you of one of the main reasons I mentioned earlier, is that it actually extends what's possible in Lens Studio beyond the functionality included in other template projects or tools or packs or things like that. So taking this custom model, we could experiment with different AR effects beyond color, use model predictions as a trigger for other unique effects, and a whole lot more. If you'd like to experiment with a face mask segmentation model, we actually already have one created and available in our pre-trained model zoo. Uh, when you create a new project in, in Fritz AI, select pre-trained, and you should have access to that and 13 other pre-trained model project templates. Uh, we'd love to see what you come up with, so let us know. Uh, and be sure to subscribe for more tutorials and content from our team and uh, check out some of the helpful links in the description below for more projects, more use cases, tutorials, things like that. Until next time, guys. Thanks.